Ah, uh, the Macintosh Classic 2, in my opinion, the best looking of the compact Max. However, looks did not translate into performance. It was woefully underpowered. It would be like popping a hood on a Stingray Corvette only to find a 15.5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton. I have nothing against Briggs & Stratton. It's just not meant to power a Corvette. But today we are going to go ahead and try to rectify that problem because the one thing the Classic 2 and the Classic have going for them is internally the cases are ideal for performing modifications. We are going to take an iMac G3 logic board and we're going to put it inside the cases along with a new LCD and power supply. Let's take a look at how the mod was done. Okay, let's start with a comparison between the standard chassis of a Macintosh Classic slash Classic 2 to a chassis I've already modified for the uh, iMac G3 logic board. First, we start with the cutout for the RAM clearance and for the IDE cable for the CD-ROM and for the ATA flash drive. Next, we have the mounting points for the logic board, the mounting points for the CD-ROM drive, the mounting points for the cooling fan that sits above the processor, speaker mounting points, and flash drive IDE mounting bracket. And here are the three standoffs for the logic board. Now, here's a uh, iMac G3 333 MHz board, Rev-D, that I uh, haven't repaired yet. Uh, but there's something I'd like to point out. And if you don't know about it, uh, it's pretty neat. At least I think it's pretty neat. And the Rev A's through D's were the only iMac logic boards that could do this. Now, Apple originally intended, evidently, to have a floppy drive installed. And if you look right here, you can see the area where they have the contact points where you can solder on a 20-pin header. And here is a Rev D 333 MHz uh, iMac logic board that we're going to use in this build. I've replaced all the uh, leaky electrolytic can capacitors with uh, tantalums, and it came out pretty darn good. Uh, now, if you go ahead and look in the upper left-hand corner, you can see where I soldered on the header for the 20-pin floppy drive connection. But ultimately, I decided that, uh, well, you know, I'm doing a pretty major upgrade here. Why don't I just go ahead and install a slot-loading CD-ROM? So, I didn't use the floppy connection, but this does show you the orientation uh, where the tab goes towards the front, and uh, it's there in case I ever want to use it. Oh, something else I want to point out. Um, if you do use the floppy drive connection, floppy drive support was dropped in macOS 8.6. So, anything from 8.1 to uh, 8.5, which runs on all the uh, first generation iMacs, revs A through D, uh, those are the only OSs you're going to be able to use. So, you can use OS 8.6, but you have to do a couple of software hacks. Here's the video cable that I made. Uh, I took the original uh, iMac logic board video connector and I tied it in with a VGA connector. So, here is the original connector and it's going to connect right here. And on the other end of the cable, we have a standard VGA connector. You can purchase these off eBay, I don't know, like five of them for a buck fifty. Now here's our power supply and I mounted it onto a Macintosh Classic 2 analog board where I stripped all the components off the board so it was nothing but a bare uh, PCB and uh, I went and uh, took the housing off of the uh, power supply because it was interfering with the cooling fan and it was interfering with the driver board uh, which is going to be on our LCD which you're going to see later. Uh, I went ahead and I kept the uh, full 24-pin uh, ATX connector and uh, yeah, 300 watts. It's more than ample to uh, drive the iMac logic board and the LCD. Now, I was a little bit worried about losing the cooling fan that was mounted on the casing. However, the uh, original iMac cooling fan, which I'm going to install directly over the processor, it, it was uh, powerful enough to cool down the power supply and the logic board in the original iMac. And I think that we're going to have really <laughs> super cooling on this one. We'll see. But uh, in any case, I didn't see where I needed it on the power supply anymore. And here's the custom power cable I built. Now here you can see it has a standard 24 pin uh, female Molex connector. You can plug this into any standard ATX power supply. And then if we look over here, I have the low profile uh, connector that I modified to plug into the bottom of the iMac logic board. And here is the soft power circuit that I built. Now I integrated it into the Hornets so, so uh, that way if you ever have to replace the iMac logic board or the ATX supply, all you have to do is unplug the power cable and you don't have to rewire the circuit back up. And I was able to retain the original Harman Kardon speakers uh, from the iMac and I installed them on this soundbar. And here is a close-up of our IDE hard drive replacement. You can see I fashioned a bracket out of two aluminum pieces and I have a 90 degree ATA2 flashcard adapter. Okay, here we see everything wired up uh, including what I didn't cover which was the uh, CD-ROM and the uh, processor cooling fan. And ah, yeah, look, 
That looks great. Look at that sound bar. And here we see the power for the ATA flash adapter. And look at the low profile. Oh uh, yeah, plenty of room on the bottom. I, I'm going to say it again. The uh, Macintosh Classic and Classic 2 chassis are the best uh, compact Macs to do an iMac G3 logic board upgrade. Here is the mold box that I built uh, for our interface from the uh, front bezel to the LCD. And uh, there it is, the template. We'll go ahead and pour the mold and let's see what we get. Oh, and it came out super. Look at that. Oh, that is slick. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what the mold produced. And what I have are, I made a clear interface. Well, not clear, it's an off amber, but it's a uh, still, I like that one. And I also did the uh, interface in onyx black. Now this was made with resin from Smooth On. And I gotta tell you, this resin is like super strong. And when I say super strong, I mean, it is way better than the uh, polycarbonate they, they used on the uh, iBooks. Now let's do a run through on how this stuff gets installed. Well, number one, we install our interface. Make sure it gets lined up. But look at that. Man, that takes up the gap so good. Oh, yeah. All right. So once we have the interface installed, next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lay down our acrylic. Now, this is a scrap piece. Uh, this is not going into anything. Uh, but you go ahead and you lay it down like that, right? And once you have it laid down, and you make sure everything's lined up, you go ahead and screw the interface to the acrylic using the top tab and the bottom tab. Now, the next step is to go ahead and take your LCD. Yeah. And you go ahead and put your LCD there. And then you're going to go ahead and screw your LCD to the acrylic plate. Now, for your driver board, you're going to go ahead and you're going to have a bracket that's going to be going over the acrylic and I'm going to go ahead and weld it to the acrylic and it'll be one module that you can take on and off. And here is the module. Look at that. Oh man, that came out great. Now let's go ahead and install it to our front bezel or face plate. Now this is a good time. I want you to go ahead and note that look at where the floppy drive goes and you can see where I've elongated the slot where I can go ahead and use the CD-ROM drive. And we just go ahead and take our LCD module, we drop it on. I've already uh, drilled out screw holes uh, where the original CRT mounted, and you just screw it onto the front bezel. And if you look to the lower right-hand corner, just below the LCD module, uh, you can see where I made a little pocket where I have the IR sensor. I extended it off the uh, driver board, and you just go ahead and put it in a pocket, and you put the uh, retaining clip on, and there you go. And here we can see the mounting points where it uh, bolts to the front bezel using the original CRT mounting points. Now we're going to take our logic board uh, chassis and uh, power board chassis and we're just going to go ahead and slip it down onto because there are some tabs on there that where it will lock into. And there it is. Now all we have to do is go ahead and plug in our LCD uh, power cable and our VGA cable for the LCD driver board, and we are done. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man, that is one clean installation. I tell you, I am really proud of this one. Ah, that came out beautiful. Look at those sound bar. Yeah. You know what? Let's go ahead and turn it around, and let's take a look at that interface. And, oh, goodness gracious, look at that. <clears throat> Sorry for the shaking. That came out good. Well, maybe that not so good. But it takes up that gap so well. In fact, the gap is even uh, smaller than it would be with the CRT. Now, that we could uh, excuse me, correct later on. All we have to do is unscrew it a bit and slide it over about 1 16th of an inch. But look at that. That came out great. And so, now we have everything installed. Now, I tested everything together before I installed them into the chassis and onto the front bezel. And, uh, well, now it's the moment of truth. I've already installed OS uh, 9 onto the um, flash card. This is it. Let's go ahead and grab a keyboard and test her out. Okay, now, the iMac I used in this project was a uh, Tangerine, and here we're using a great keyboard. Oh, man, those engineers at Apple. How did they figure that one out? Okay, so we go ahead and plug it in to the USB port. 
And then we're going to go ahead and plug in our power cable. We're going to go ahead and spin her around. Now, I have a soft power switch at the rear, but uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the soft power switch on the keyboard. Oh, that is slick, man. All right. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up because uh, we've all seen this boot before. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get to the desktop, and I want to test the DVD slash CDRW. Now we stick a Mac Attic disc in. Ah, I love that clunk. Speed it up a little bit. Let's just go ahead and open up the disc. Ah, all right. Well, that's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and eject the disc. And let's go ahead and get the rear case on. And here we go. Ah, look at the color in those cases. And here's the remote sensor and the Apple emblem that I've put on. Oh, yeah, that came out great. Now, look where I uh, drilled those speaker ports. Uh, I copied that from the uh, right side. Yeah, came out great. And there's the rear. You can see the soft power switch where I replaced the original power switch. And look at that interface on the rear. Yeah, I like the way that came out. And finally, here's our right side. Now, let's compare this mod to a standard tray loading iMac. And, of course, dimension-wise, it is way smaller. Take a look at this. Yeah. And, of course, weight-wise. Oh, why would they put a carry handle on a 38-pound machine? <laughs> look at the weight of the Classic. <laughs> Saw powered on at the same time. Look how fast that boots. Of course, I did speed it up, but it is significantly faster than the iMac standard because of the CF card. And look at the cooling on here. Yeah, it runs 30 degrees cooler. Of course, that's because you don't have that huge CRT and that very hot flyback transformer. And uh, also, you don't have that ATA drive that's generating heat in there and acting like a huge heat sink, even after you shut the machine down. Now, on the original iMac tray loader, you had the cooling fan buried under several layers of uh, plastic and metal, so it was pretty silenced uh, as compared to the mod. Um, if you look here, we're coming in at 50 decibels. I forget what the background uh, decibels were, but uh, still, the mod is about 10 decibels higher. And I'm okay with that because I get that increased cooling as compared to the uh, original Trailer iMac. So, that's it. I love it. I think it came out really great, and uh, I might do one or two more in the future. Uh, so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a great week.